Well, hi guys, delighted to welcome Sligo chairman Tommy Higgins with me today. Sli uh, Tommy, rather, how are you? You well? Good morning. Very good, Keith. Thank you. Brilliant. Thanks very much for coming on. Sure, but we'll start off with um, Liam Buckley, and uh, obviously his time came to an end, Tommy, at Sligo Rovers after a couple of years. Um, from the club's point of view, where, where did you see that? What, how did you come to that decision? And obviously Liam as well, because it was a mutual decision, isn't that right? It, it was. And look, at it's, it's football, Keith. And yeah. uh, we have nothing but good um, times from with, with Liam. He was absolutely brilliant. And you must remember that we were uh, flirting with yeah. relegation for a number of years before that. You know, and it came fifth, fourth and third uh, in the three years, mm. three, three, over three years he was there. He was absolutely wonderful and a gentleman. And he's left the club in a way better position than uh, when he came. And it's appreciated by everybody, all the, the officers and, and the committee members of the club, and by all the fans as well. And it's just one of those things in football um, uh, 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 at the time. So uh, uh, we have nothing but good um, vibes from Liam and uh, a, a good time that we had with him. So we're, we're very pleased with it. And just, that's football. It's happened a million times. And uh, that's and we're just going to move on now. Yeah. That, that's an interesting point you made there. You said he left uh, the club in a better position than they were in. in. In what kind of sense do you think he left them well, in a better position? Well, we, we, you know, if you go back 10 years ago, you know, we had a great run there, cup runs and a league win, etc. And then we had, it happens with other clubs. You go through a, a, a period, I think we had four or five years that was very difficult. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, then he steadied the ship, you know, brought the better players into the, into, it, it was a good fit at the time. Very good fit. And he delivered. And, uh, you know, we hadn't been in Europe for, what, the guts of 10 years. So eight years or something or whatever. So it was, it was great on that end of it. So, you know, the club is great now and it's in a good position to, you know, to, to, to move forward. Yeah, in terms of the manager role itself, how many people did you actually interview for the role and what was that process like? Was it there, was a, there was a quite, yeah, yeah, uh, you know, I'm not going into the, the, the gritty yeah. details of it, I'll give you an outline of it. No, there's no, there's a huge amount of uh, people applied for it, as you can understand, from all over the world. But um, we had we had six, we ended up with, uh, we interviewed uh, six people and then we we brought it down then to two and we had uh, third. It was a, it was a very long protracted Mm. Uh, not in days, but in hours that we put into it. So we had a clean sheet started off with no preference for anybody. And uh, when they came in, we just uh, went through all the list and then got picked out what we thought was the best. We had half a dozen people and then we brought that down to two. Yeah, finally, obviously, you appointed Liam's number two, John Russell. Of course, he played for the yes. club as well. And uh, what was the main reason for this appointment in your view? Was it the fact that he knew the club? Was that a big part of it? Look, at, he, he, he did a wonderful, two wonderful interviews. And, uh, you know, when, when all was said and done, we, we felt that was the best um, thing. And, um, I, you know, at the, at the outset, I wasn't sure whether John would, uh, would be in the shake-up. But he was really, really good. Knew what he wanted. Knew uh, every... He, yeah, of course, he had a bit of an advantage by being with the club. But uh, I, and some people have said, well... You shouldn't hire somebody when you let, when a previous manager let go. You shouldn't hire any of the back team. We just had a clean sheet starting out. We had no prejudice one way or the other. So, but he won it on merit, and that's all we that we got. He had a fabulous uh, interviews. Yeah, did he surprise you in a way? His depth of knowledge and what he wanted to do, and you know, and is, is the importance of the uh, the academy, and like he was involved with mm. a lot of guys through uh, down through the years because he's been with the club and he's been he was a development officer with the FAI, so quite amount of knowledge going back through the years of the club. And uh, but he he was a fit what we wanted in the end, and he knew, but he knew he knew he knew the ins and outs of the club, and uh, he's very he's a young young manager. And if you look at it now, there's. Mm -hmm. uh, I think seven out of ten of the league managers are under forty. There's two in their forties, and there's just one over uh, over fifty. So I'm not, and I'm not saying that we went because he was a young manager. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't believe in that in ages of, uh, because you have some great young managers, but you also have some very look at Ancelotti and the, but you know, Roy Hodgson was there in the seventies doing a great job. So it is just the way that it was, and uh, th th that's the way that's what the committee looked at. And there were quite extensive questioning. It went on for a long time, you know. So uh, we, we we were delighted with the outcome of the end. Anyway. Yeah, you're happy enough you took your but time. He, I, I said, <laughs> I said to him, he said, "You're in the same position as Ten Hag, so don't worry about it." He's starting now for a fresh, and hopefully it'll work out. And hopefully it'll work out for John. Same thing. 
whether you're a big absolutely. club or a small club, it's the it's the same process you go through, you know, and uh, it's the same. Uh, it's all relevant, but the same pressures are on John as they're on Den Haag. Yeah, absolutely. What are the ambitions of the club going forward? Sorry, I, I missed what are, that. What are the ambitions of the club going forward? But look, you see, we we we, um, we published a master plan last year, uh, last mm -hmm. summer. Um, mm -hmm. We have to upgrade our stadium. I have a fantastic belief in the League of Ireland. I believe it's a it's a hidden treasure there that has to be brought forward, and it's going to take a, a lot of drive and a lot of ambition. Uh, and uh, if you look at where rugby has come from in the last 20 years, mm. and uh, we had it in the 60s and the 70s, where big crowds, and they never grew. It was a wasted opportunity. And the reality is that the GA and the rugby at our lunch, if you want to be blunt about it. So, you know, there was, there was never the thought or the vision or the, you know, the development of the club. And if you look at other countries in Europe of similar size and population, Denmark, you know, Norway, Sweden, roughly the same size, and a lot of, and look where they have come, and where they, you know, we're looking at them. Look at all those great leagues and facilities, etc. We've been left behind on that, and a lot of investment needs to go into the league. But the pop, the 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 fans are there, and it's just a matter. I think it's always. Uh, I came from the entertainment business, and when you look at it, that uh, I, I do believe it's a cliche. If you build it, they will come, but you have to provide the facilities. And uh, the the um, uh, the facility and ha make a good night out for people. I mean, fair play to Shamrock Rovers who got themselves into the in, into the um, um, Tallis Stadium, and I see the diggers in there now at present completing that stadium. It's wonderful, and it's a credit to them for getting that. I envy them, to be honest with you. They've got a great deal out of the out, out of the the corporate, but good, that's the standard we all have to go for. All the, that's what, and I believe if you look at the what at the last week in there a Shepherd, seven or eight thousand people at it. You know. So the crowds, you can see what's happening there. Four and a half thousand in Galway for a first division match versus that's four. Crazy. Fan, absolutely. Mm. So and our crowds are up, everybody's crowds are up this year. So we have to build on that and don't let it go back. So if you're asking me what is our ambitions for the club, we want to be going for Europe and hopefully challenge for the championship every year. You're wasting your time if you don't have any ambition. So we, we have ambition for our club. So um, that's, uh, you know, Europe is achievable this year. It's going to be a dog fight. And the last two years were dog fights. You know, Shamrock Rovers in a great position for, to win the league, but they're not there. The dog are knocking at the door now. So it's a fantastic competitive league. Yeah. Do you believe that Sligo Rovers need to qualify for Europe every year? Or do you kind of put plans in place that, you know what I mean, well, that, we, we can't necessarily qualify every year, let's say? Yeah, but financially you need to call, you know, it's all about finances. And we were a community based club, you know, mm -hmm. so we huge on fundraising. So it's our um uh we, we would love to qualify for Europe and that's the aim and that's what we want to go for. It's part and parcel of our of, of our plans that we want to qualify for Europe. And that's that's mm -hmm. that's the first aim uh, of the season. And Liam helped us do that, qualified for twice. So we say we're waiting now for the, 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 the draws on the 14th next week. So um, uh, we're waiting anxiously for that to see what happens. So looking forward to it, yeah. Yeah, that's actually something that I suppose was disappointed everyone in Sligo last year was the European campaign. I think yeah. um, they were, you felt they were capable of better, let's be honest. And, uh, we were, yeah. We, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So going into next year, like you have another chance to put that right, I guess, really. Absolutely. Yeah. The players are great. You know, they're, they're, they're aware of that. I think they're very disappointed themselves because that's what players aim for. You know, professional players start playing in Europe and they had a higher standard everywhere. So hopefully that will be another better season this season. Yeah. Yeah, Tommy, I just have a fan question here. Nothing strange, but um, he says, what are Sligo expecting of John Russell for the remainder of the season? Does he have to achieve European place or what will the board want from him over the next 15 months? And what's what the, the budget like? He says, I don't know if you can answer that one. <laughs> the budget is always a challenge. You have no idea. <laughs> You have absolutely no idea. Look at the, the supporters yeah, every here. Every fan's question, isn't it? What's the budget like? Ah, no, no, no. <laughs> look at The plans are no different for John than yeah. they are for anybody else. He knows what we're looking for. They're, they're the aims of I've, I've left them out. We want to, we hope to qualify for Europe. And uh, look, there's an awful lot to look forward to for our club now. There's five months left of the season. We have a chance of Europe. We have the cup coming up. The good tradition is like going to the cup. And we have still have a chance of qualifying for Europe because it's going to be it's going to be brutally competitive now for the next mm -hmm. five months with all the clubs there. 
So, there, John, he's no different than what we had laid out for Liga. No different. And I'd say for any manager that comes in, that's what we aim for. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great league. And um, the only thing I just think about, does it, do we need to refresh it or whatever? You know, we have, is it getting a little bit too familiar that we're playing each other four times of the year? And I said it before mm. on another interview I did, you know, I think we should pursue and uh, ex- ex- look at what we're doing in the league. And is there another way for doing it, like in Scotland, where the splitters are something to make it more competitive for the last part of the season for the fans? Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I like the idea of the, the hybrid North South competition and an additional competition where there yeah. could be, if you negotiate the right, get a Euro, an extra, an extra, I mean, European place out of it. Mm. You know, I, I, all those talks sort of um, uh, disappeared once we had uh, COVID. And I hope they can revive them again and see what can be done with the league. But I think there's a great future and you can see it at present. You know, there's a bit of a buzz, not so a bit of great buzz about. And the product on the pitch is fantastic. You know, the, the standard has improved an awful lot. And um, I think what's letting us down are the facilities. But an awful lot looks, what, what, it, what does it look like on television? Because you're looking at uh, Premier League games, you're looking at first, even going down the leagues. You know, the facilities are better. So, um, uh, so what, what I'm saying, it's the perception. And that's why when you see a game on, uh, in, in Tala, it looks yeah. fantastic. Uh, you know, the whole setup. And the, it's the perception. And, uh, we, you know, if you look at the entertainment business, we have a world-class entertainment business in Ireland. And they came from dance halls right up to, you know, the, the three arena and the board gash and the Crow Park and the Viva, all that. And we have a world-class entertainment business here. But we're kind of, some of our facilities are stuck back in the dance hall days, and that's not good enough, you know. But there are a lot of happening now at present that it's, I, I think it's wonderful to see. They're talking about upgrading uh, Talca and... Um, uh, uh Mount Park and uh, Richmond Park mm. and, and even uh, Finn Park, Park as well. yeah even Finn Park yeah, you, yeah yes indeed yeah, yeah no the, the, the lads and harps are mm. and so so we're doing we're doing the same with ours so mm. the architects are about to lodge plan, uh, with the planning department for uh, for planning permission that's the first step that we're doing so uh, we've done that the club is funding that so, you know, the, 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 we invested some of the money we got from the, our transfers last year into, into, into the stadium. But it's a huge challenge for Sligo Rovers every year. Absolutely huge challenge. And we have a big budget this year. And now we have a women's team. And yeah. uh, they're, they're doing very, very well for the first season. We thought good, it would be Good results on the weekend against Wexford. Very good, good results. Uh, you know, and uh, 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 great excitement. There's a buzz about it. And the women's game is exploding, and we all have to prepare for that. We don't have the facilities for it. So we need more pitches, etc. But you need just to drive and lead it forward, and otherwise um, uh, there's no point to be defeatist in it. So I'm very optimistic, to be honest, uh, overall. No, that's brilliant. Before I let you go, one more question. Do you yep. think Saigo will do some business in the off-season in terms of bringing players in? That John says he is, it? yeah. So we mm-hmm. let him at it, yeah. So it's uh, the, uh, we hope, yeah. There's, there's always one or two, you know, that yeah. um, you, you hope to bring in, and um, mm-hmm. I think that's no different than any other club. That's what happens this time of the year. So hope he intends. I think he intends to do that, yeah. So he, 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 yeah, and the, the great well, what 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 we were lucky in one way, we never missed one trip from the time mm-hmm. Liam left until the John was appointed. And that was not deliberate, it's just the way it worked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, you know, if it had taken us another week to get our, our, our manager, but uh, we got him in and uh, the players were back last Thursday and we were able to, to um, um, and Johnny took the first training session. He was appointed on, on, on Wednesday evening. So um, it worked out very well at the end. Yeah. Look, Tommy, thanks very much for coming on. Appreciate that. You're welcome, Keith, and the best of luck for the rest of the season. Keep promoting the league. It's very good. Thank you. No bother. I will. Thanks very okay. much.